Morning everyone, Dave Greco here again. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week this week, hopefully getting some great art done and really pushing their uh, portfolios just a little bit further. Uh, before we get started on the topic today, I just wanna have a little bit of a background video going. This is actually some concept art that was done at my studio this week for a particular creature that had to be made. I had done a more of a illustrative picture of it before and the modeler wanted some more simple designs for it that he could use for modeling. So this is something that you might see when you're in there and you have to give to the modeling team. So I figured that would be appropriate to show while we're, we're talking about this today. What I do want to talk about today, and I got this actually specifically from a person that has sent me, his name was uh, Napolsky. And his question was, is how to start a job as a concept artist? And he says, many of us know how to draw, but what next? What are the requirements? How to get seen by someone? And generally, what does the job look like? Not really a tutorial, but some things about the job and how to get in there. And it's actually a very common question. It's a question I get a lot. And, you know, my advice for it, it's not going to cover like all the answers. It's not going to be the only thing to go for when you're looking through it, but I think I can definitely offer some tips and things that, you know, I think could benefit a lot of people that kind of have one outlook on thinking how they may get a job into the industry because it is very competitive to get a job as a concept artist. It's, it's hard. And uh, a lot of concept positions, there's usually a small team at a studio of concept artists. A lot of concept artists stay around for a long time and if they flow between studios, so usually there's a kind of the same pool of people that can make it a little more difficult. So really to start off, one thing, we can talk about a bunch of couple things here, right? So we always talk about how important your portfolio is, right? So everyone knows, you know, creating great art and having a strong portfolio is super important, right? But what is the next step after that? How do you get your work seen? How do you get to that studio that you're trying to get at? And there's a bunch of different things. There's some things we can think about is, do I need to go to school or not? That's a big question I get a lot as well. You know, as far, and we can tackle that subject first, because I think that's a good basis where a lot of students and people learning, that's kind of like one of the first questions they have, like, do I need to go to art school? You know, uh, art schools are very expensive. That's a uh, big, you know, negative to it, right? I mean, the price tag on an art school education is pretty crazy. So I think that is totally dependent on the person themselves. For me, personally, I found it beneficial to go to art school. It you know, I didn't have that self-drive that I would have needed, whereas like self-teaching or learning from the internet and the internet really wasn't what it was today when, when I was younger. So I didn't have as many options as far as like YouTube stuff and Gumroad and contacting with other artists. So I didn't have a lot of options. But for me, I needed that kick in the butt. I needed to be surrounded by students that were creating art. I needed that, that kind of focus. So for me, it was necessary. Most game studios are not going to require a degree uh, there's very few studios that actually do require it. So it's not really the degree that you're going, but it's for experience. And uh, one of the very important things, and this is going to come in later as, as far as getting into the industry, is those social contacts and connections that you make. Those friends that you make at school, those people that you meet, you know, they may go off into different studios and different parts of careers. Either, either they go into movies or games. And, you know, they're like, oh, you know, they're friends with you and they can help connect you with their art director. And there's just there's so many kind of things that you can take away with it more than just the degree itself. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration. And like most things is you get what you put into it, right? I, I knew a lot of people that went to art school with that didn't put that time and dedication into it. And it really was pretty much a waste of time for them. They, they didn't put that effort in or that focus and it, it didn't land them a job anywhere. And they probably are not working today. So you really have to put that and that focus in. But that kind of brings me and bridges me into the next thing is about those social connections, right? And you guys are already kind of doing it just by watching people on YouTube or on Twitch or any other thing. You know, there's sites like ArtStation and ConceptArt.org, all these things. So those social connections and in networking, it's really just networking, right? Is pretty, pretty important, especially getting your first uh, gig at a studio. There's been so many times where I've gotten uh, either contract commissions or offers through 
people that I have met, and it's really, uh, it's almost, it's so much more important sometimes than even just dropping a cold portfolio in, to a art director's desk. It's tough for them because they get so many, right? It's hard to uh, go through them sometimes. Because I was even thinking, so like my first concept art position that I got for THQ was pretty much through a referral. I had worked at EA at the time and we would go out with a bunch of friends and one of the recruiters there that worked at EA, we became friends and she had, ended up leaving the studio at one point and went up to THQ. And then months later, she had gotten in touch with me. She's like, oh, I knew you were always interested in getting into it. Uh, we have a position I think that's opening up. You should totally apply. I'll put in a good word for you. So that stuff is super, super important. I probably would not have gotten that job if not for that. So that's super important. But I think the biggest thing I want to talk about, and I think this is something that a lot of people, I don't know if they don't want to focus on it or they just haven't even thought about it, is really the studio that you're looking to get into, right? Either out of school or you have a brand new portfolio. You know, so many people that even show me their portfolio and want reviews and stuff. Like, oh yeah, you know, I want to work for Blizzard, I want to work for Riot, I want to work for Naughty Dog, I want to... All these places, pretty much what they can, you, know, you would think is like a top tier AAA studio, right? These are very, very hard studios to get a job with. Just because they've kind of hit that mass market appeal too. And for, yeah, so it'd be great to work for those studios. They have uh, some amazing talented artists there. It'd be uh, fantastic to work with them. But they also get a massive amount of portfolio submissions. So it is very, very difficult. And even if your work is great, you just never know. There just might be the person right next to you that just submitted something that just caught their eye a little bit more. And so it's it can be tough. And so the what I tell people is definitely check out all the smaller like indie studios out there. There's so many studios out there these days. And indie games is are totally different than uh, what they used to be. They are producing amazing games with amazingly talented teams. A lot of the smaller studios these days actually have a lot of industry veterans that used to work at AAA studios and didn't kind of want to feel like a cog in the wheel anymore. And so they go to work at these smaller studios. And I think, I would say a smaller studio is probably like maybe 50 and under people. And they are phenomenal. You know, it may, I just, I don't want people to disregard them because I, I think I see that a lot. You know, it's like even people that wanted to, work for movies, I remember having some classmates like, oh, they just want to work at Pixar. They just want to work at Disney. You know, everything else feels subpar to them. But the biggest thing is, is just getting your foot in the door. Once you are in, you're in. And you're. I don't think you're considered like a lesser part of the industry if you're working for a smaller studio or, or anything, if it's not even a AAA game. But the fact is, is that you're going to be working on a team, which is fantastic. You're going to be working with people that have worked on games for a long time. You're going to be painting and creating work all day. Your skill set is going to, pr going to improve massively. Instead of just working your portfolio a little bit at night while you get back from another job, you're going to be engrossed in your work all day long. And then you never know, like one of those people that you work with at this smaller studio, they may go off to a big AAA studio that you're kind of eyeballing later on. And they can go to their AD and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, this guy, He's super easy to work with. He's fantastic. And I totally recommend him. You know how much that means to any type of kind of recruiter? It's phenomenal. I know me personally, when I was doing a lot of portfolio reviews when we were hiring concept artists, if someone could tell me that they worked with a person, they're great to work with, they take feedback, you know, I would put them way ahead of the line, even if their portfolio was a little bit less, like, less quality than some other portfolios. If I can, someone can tell me that they're great to work with, you know how important that is? It's crazy. There's a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but the worst thing you can get is someone that's, they're either kind of like a prima donna or they can bring, I don't know, like a bad attitude to the game and kind of infect the team and they're hard to work with. Then does, who cares what they can draw or paint? If they're, if they're a pain in the ass to work with, then it doesn't matter. So if someone can tell me how fantastic someone else is, that's, it's huge. And that's why it's, you know, don't burn your bridges you know, you know, try to be a you know good person when you're working in these studios. You know, might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised. You know, I've 
had to work with some crazies, that's for sure. So I think that's a huge thing. I think just looking at those smaller studios, I think a great way to find some of these studios, I can look some up here now, is there's a great site called gamedevmap.com. And I'll put a link to it down below. I've actually used this site a few times when I was trying to find a new, uh, new studio to work for. So basically you can go to the site. And like I said, there should be a link down below for it. And you can find the city where you live, all that type of stuff. And then it'll show you all the different studios in that area. And so you can find like smaller studios, large studios. So it's a good way to see kind of the whole entire range and then just go through them, you know, apply to all of them, try to, you just never know what's going to come from any studio. And you know, sometimes you'll be at one of these small studios and they have a huge hit and you're part of that small team. And guess what? You get to reap the rewards from that. And it's a huge thing that like at a small team, your feedback is so much more important. You're really a huge part of the project. You know, you can really take so much control of it. You go to these large studios and you know, I think, Large studios are great for certain things. For me, I, I do like the smaller studio life these past few years. But you can kind of feel like a cog in a big wheel, like a big game engine machine, you know, and you can feel pretty replaceable sometimes. But so I think everyone should definitely check out smaller studios. I think it's easier to get your foot in the door because there's less uh, portfolios coming in. I can say that when we put positions open, we definitely get far less portfolios. So you're going to stand out a lot easier. So just get your foot in the door. That's my biggest advice I can get. When I started out, I didn't even start out as a concept artist. I was a texture artist. I didn't want to be a texture artist. But I knew if I could just get into a studio, that's the first step. So just try to get in there. And then once you're in there, oh man, it's, it's like you're in the group, right? Then you just start moving around. It's uh, I think that's one of the biggest uh, pieces of advice that I can give. So guys, thank you so much. And I definitely, you know, share this video around. I think it's important. I get this question so much. I think this is important for a lot of people to see. So seriously, thank you so much, everybody. Um, definitely throw a like, subscribe if you can. You guys have been awesome, awesome this year. I'm really looking forward to the content that we put out this year. But guys, thank you so, so much. And I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Bye.